One of my favorite passages is, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, that where I am, you may be also. Father, we thank you for that place called Father's house. Father, we're grateful that we have a place reserved for us in your presence there in glory in heaven. Father, we just trust you according to your word. We trust that we have eternal life through faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we're grateful, we're hopeful, and we trust you with all our hearts. We thank you for the saints that are here watching. Thank you for those that are online with us. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And anyone who agreed said... Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to pull you a little closer to me, madam. I, there, there you go. All right, we are, uh, I guess if I were to tell you uh, my f top five or ten subjects, wisdom is always up there. And so the title for tonight is The Beginning of Wisdom. And it's just so, it's so necessary in this day we live in because if you have wisdom, you can navigate. Obviously, most Christians believe for the, the Holy Ghost to, for the Holy Spirit to help us navigate. But the Spirit of God wants us to walk in wisdom, to have wisdom. And so uh, we talk about wisdom a lot in this church, and uh, it's a wonderful subject from the book of Proverbs and a lot of the things that uh, King David said in, in the Psalms. And so uh, I want to just, for, for someone, maybe a young Christian or a new Christian or, or an old Christian that just hasn't really uh, studied the subject, uh, that uh, wisdom is the principal thing. According to Solomon, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with your getting, get understanding. And so he goes on to explain why it's so important. But in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, it, from the King James Version, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Father, thank you for the Word of God tonight. We esteem your Word. We seek you through your word, and we hear the voice of the Spirit of God through your word. And so we're listening, we're watching, and we're learning from your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're welcome here in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Proverbs 4, 7, I use King James, and uh, my wife has shared a couple of different versions here. So I'm sharing King James, which is wisdom is the principal thing. Uh, therefore, get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. So there is a level that you get past general knowledge of just life in general, but then there are things that God wants you to know and understand, and he'll take you to the next level if you'll pursue him, and you'll seek wisdom, and you'll cry out for... The Bible talks about it in Proverbs. If you cry out for wisdom, if you, uh, does, you know, seek God with, for, and diligently to know and understand uh, the, the knowledge of God, then God will start to download those things to you, and the light will go on, and you'll be grateful for it, and you, you won't be able to get enough of the subject of wisdom and knowledge. All right, verse 2 says, Proverbs, this is New Living Translation of Proverbs 9, chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom, or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Uh, we just cannot amplify in this day and age what the importance or how important it is to have good judgment, to make good decisions, to have the wisdom of God, to have guidance from God, to know the direction that God wants for our lives. Because there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of people that are saying a lot of different things. And this will help you to be able to navigate. This will help you to cut through. Thank God that the Holy Spirit lives in us. And we can tune into Him. Prayer develops the voice of the Spirit on the inside of you. If you say, I'm not hearing the voice of God on the inside of me, pray more. Spend more time in prayer. Come to prayer groups. 
Seek God through prayer. Obviously, seek God through his word. But then be, learn to listen. It's a diligence. It takes practice learning to listen. Amen. Verse 11 says, wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. And then I looked this up in the Message Bible. Can I just comment on that before you go there? Sure. All right, so the focus that I had was that verse 11. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. And so as we discussed a little bit of this, there were some other ideas that came along. And so just remember this, and, and that, that wisdom will multiply your days in the sense that with long life will he satisfy you. You know, the, the idea of what we're going through right now in the world and all the things that are going on, you know, some people are kind of, you know, not sure about that, that whole idea. But man, when things are going right in your life, then the idea of multiplying your days and your years is a blessing from Almighty God. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor Nance. Message Bible skilled. Well, what jumped out at me when I looked at this is knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. I thought, oh my gosh, I know a lot of people that could benefit from, from good judgment. And I always want to have good judgment in my life. I want to walk in good judgment. Anyway, skilled living gets its start in the fear of God insight into life from knowing a holy God. It's through me, Lady Wisdom, that your life deepens and the years of your life ripen. So that kind of speaks a little bit to what you were saying, that with long life will he satisfy you. You can have every day can be a good day Amen. in God. Live wisely and wisdom will permeate your life. Mock life and life will mock you. I think that there's, we're seeing that in real time in a lot of the world. There's a lot of mockers, and life is mocking back. So perhaps this has something to do with it. Well, it also says, do not be a mocker. Well, of course, And I look yeah. around in the room, and I, you know, most of you are very straight, straight shooters. Mm -hmm. But, man, sometimes we can get into that mockery, and that's just so, so it's, it's so destructive. Amen. So through wisdom, we can make the most of the rest of our lives. Through wisdom, we can make the most of every day that we have the rest of our life. And we should, because God has a plan and a purpose for us, and it's a good plan. Amen. And there's a purpose with that plan. So in the midst of things that maybe don't seem like there might be a future or is this, if this is as good as it get, gets and the world is going to get nuttier tomorrow, can I just go to heaven now? <laughs> but you do not get to check out on God early. We have to finish our race. We need to run our race well. Well done, thou good and faithful servant right? So through wisdom, we can make the most of the rest of our lives. We can have the peace of God and the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Holy Spirit will help us to navigate the challenges we are all facing. No one is immune to challenges, but those challenges don't need to run our lives and those challenges don't need to run us over. So I, I feel like these passages really give us some um, helpful insight in how to navigate some of this stuff. Yeah. You want me to keep going? Yeah, go ahead. So knowledge of what is holy is understanding. Now you would think that we wouldn't have to do a, like a survey, but other people have done surveys and Christian organizations have done surveys of Christians and uh, wow. Um, there's some, there's some lack of just even basic Bible understanding. So, uh, it seems that there is not much, uh, of the fear of the Lord considered sacred or holy by the world standards any longer. Certainly the fear of the Lord has declined even in Bible believing churches in this country. Knowledge of scripture and what the Bible says among Christians is alarming. And where I got this from was I, 
I didn't realize this was going on because most of you know I don't watch the news anymore. I'm not on social media much anymore, so my life is so much more peaceful. Um, but apparently some large churches similar to ours, born again, spirit-filled, believe the Bible, preach from the Bible, not, you know, whatever, had posted, and this is not going to be a political thing, but had posted like in celebration of life the day that Roe v. Wade was overturned. Praise God. Praise God for a victory for life. And I guess what happened is members of their own congregation, like it was a, there was some horrible backlash that they got from people in their own congregation. And so what that said to me was that there is a lot of Christians then who don't even have a basic understanding of life. You know, we've taught on that topic, I believe, from a compassionate standpoint. But we honor God, and we honor what his word says. And life is precious to God. Every life is precious to God. And so we value what God values, and we celebrate life. And you so are the most compassionate person I know, and you've handled this subject so tenderly, respectfully, and you, you've presented God's will is life, and yet your compassion and love for people but who went through the But his will for people that have gone through that, exactly, yeah, horror. That horror participated in whatever aspect has been horrific on the backside. And of course, they, nobody ever tells you that in the media. You don't get to see that story. Those, those are tears behind closed doors and deep personal regrets. And there's forgiveness and there's hope and there is healing and there is no judgment. There's no judgment for any of the decisions that anybody has made. So we don't judge others. We minister forgiveness and help and healing, but we also have to take a stand for what's right and not shrink back from it in that, in that regard. So um, what it just tells me is that you know, there's some work to be done even in the body of Christ where knowledge of the Holy One, knowledge of His Word is concerned. And by me even bringing it up tonight, I don't know what each one of you believes. Sometimes I think I know, and every once in a while I bump into a situation where somebody will snap back at me, and it catches me off guard. And you're welcome to what you to what you believe, but as a pastor, my heart is that you will stand for what God stands for, and as you grow in your faith and in your Christianity, you will align yourself more and more. Um, well, that's our objective of pre presenting his, so much. With his word. That's, that's our objective with pre presenting so much word in all of our messages. Why? To, to amplify the idea that we are word people and that our lives are based on the word and therefore we want everyone to have their lives based on the word. And we know some people come and go and they go, well, that's not me. Well, it's those that want to. And I'll, tell you, you, I'll tell you what has happened with, with if, you, if you don't value life of an unborn child, you don't value any life. And we are in a situation right now where medical supplies have to be rationed. So we're on a, we are on the precipice of a slippery slope here where in some countries already, if you are over a certain age, if you are an unhealthy individual or hit certain markers versus someone who seems healthier, and you're both waiting for the same treatment, they're, even if you're sicker, they're going to give the treatment to this person because they're more valuable 
to society. So anyway, we don't want to go down that road tonight, but it's a slippery slope over into euthanasia and some of those other things. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. The wicked are so good at twisting things around. Or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. That's where joy comes from. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do, no matter what. Trees planted by rivers have water. They have a water source. They have a life source. And it sustains them even in challenging situations. So we can be healthy, we can live fruitful lives, and we can prosper in the things that we do. So just like the Bible, a lot of the promises in the Bible, um, that promise is conditional. So how does this version of the blessing of the Lord, Lord work, and what does it entail? You going to take over? Of course, because I love the subject. <laughs> Seeds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very simple. It's about seeds. Jesus said all of God's word works like seeds. And when we plant and we nurture and we guard and we protect, those seeds grow into harvest of the things that were planted. And so if, if someone's going, I, I haven't seen the harvest yet. Well, you're waiting on a harvest and you wait and there's seed time and harvest. You plant the seed time, time as you wait, and the harvest time. And so what, what if I don't like waiting? No, that's the hardest part. That's the hardest part, waiting for your harvest. But patience is the fruit of the Spirit. You just need to develop more patience. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Did I say patience? But it is. It's fruit. <laughs> uh, were you going to go no, somewhere Lord. with that? No. Okay. No. Uh, all right, Jesus said all God's Word works like seeds, and so talked about that. And Mark chapter 4 is... Uh, one of the best passages in the whole Bible for anybody that wants to study the subject. Seeds always produce after their kind. You can't produce a seed and get something else. And so there's the, the area of Christianity that you're weak in should be an area of development for you. And it can't always be planting seeds of the good things that uh, we all want and skipping the tough stuff, but we want to be straight across the board. We want to have a garden full of different subjects in life, and we need to grow up into Christ in all things. So uh, planting seeds as, as a pastor, as pastors in a church that preaches the Word of God, we want to give different subjects on a consistent, ba consistent basis. Some, sometimes we go several weeks on a particular subject, but overall through the year, we want to cover most subjects so that we can have a healthy, well-rounded Christian family here. And so planting seeds, all right? Going forward, do you have a comment? before we? No, but does anybody have a comment or a, a question? No? All right. Go we surprised on. everybody by asking for a question there. That's, uh... Well, just curious. All right, so seeds always produce uh, Mark 4.24. And he said to them, take heed what you hear. Brothers and sisters, I want to amplify that thought from Jesus. As if Jesus were standing here and leaning over to each group here from the three places in the, in the place, take heed what you're listening to. Yes. Take yes. heed what comes into your life. Take heed to the things you see through your eye gates, the things you hear through your ears, because all of them are seeds. Everything in life is a seed, and it's going to come into your heart, and maybe it won't grow up into bad stuff, but it will block good stuff. That's a really important point before you talk. I want to say that bad seeds will block good seeds. So you, you, someone's going, why hasn't my harvest come? Because you haven't weeded out bad seeds, and you've been putting bad seed in with good seed, and the two are just canceling each other out. And I, I, I want to, I, I've, I feel very strongly that right. I want our people to reap good harvests. And good harvest comes from protecting the seeds that you sow that are good. But again, reiterating that when you plant bad seed, bad seed will cancel out good seed and you get no harvest. I think too we're living in a time where never before in history has it been so evident what people are listening to. Because 
there's such a stark difference in a variety of camps. And what people are listening to in feeding is determining their behavior. And when you, you can, I don't know about you, but I can just, I can go, oh, okay, they're listening to this. Oh, okay, that's what they're listening to. Oh, okay, that's what they're listening to. How crazy. I'm sure I'm not the only person. Before, there was kind of like a general sense of moral behavior and, and societal politeness and kindness and different things. And people kept a few things a little more under wraps. They might be talking about them at home, but you know, you could get in a group of people and you wouldn't know who went to church. You wouldn't know who believed this or who believed that. But now it's like everything people are putting in is coming right out here and it's determining their behavior and you are seeing different results in different camps and man it matters this matters in the day and age that we are living in this matters scripture said the apostle paul said preach the word instant in season and out christians why wouldn't you have a pastor that would want to preach the word consistently if that's the call from the apostle paul from the lord jesus preach the word don't talk about you know everything else and not talk about the word. Now, every now and then we talk about stuff that interests me and may not interest you, but too bad. I'm the pastor. I'm up here. I get to talk, so you have to wait till I get back to the word, but we're going to preach the word every single time we're here. Thank you for that. Amen. You're all welcome to amen. Go ahead, Nance. We're letting Pastor Nance talk. All right. Plant good things in your heart, reap a good harvest. That just seems very, very basic. But you know what? It's one of those things that we need to continually remind ourselves. I think that's why uh, Romans says, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word. And we always want to build our faith and remind ourselves about basics because w it's like anything, if you start to, you start getting going in something, you let those basics slip a little bit, and then stuff doesn't quite work right. You always want to go back to the basics. Plant good seeds, but you got to plant the seeds too. You need to get the book of seeds out, stick it in your mouth, and, and get back to making those declarations and speaking things, speaking things out. So... Yeah, it says here, I'm going back, way, way up back up there. Steer clear of unholy mockers giving you counsel and advice on how you should live or think or what oh, you should yeah. do. Now, in church, we do give you advice, counsel, on how you should live. Yeah, but we're think, not unholy mockers. I know, mockers. of course, I'm, I'm amplifying this. Pardon me, ma'am. Hey, okay. listen. I'm talking right now. All right, you, you got the floor, baby. All right. I've got the floor. Thank you very okay. much. But... We want to amplify the idea that churches are getting away from telling you what the Word of God says. Mm. And we're going to tell you what the Word of God says and because we want you to go to heaven and we want you to stay the course. We don't want you to fall from grace. We don't want you to get over in the world. We don't want you to backslide. Right. We want you to stay in the Word of God. And that's why we're going to continue to preach the Word of God. Well, most of the marketing today, a lot of social media, TV, movies, whatever, it's it's propagating a message that is clearly not godly. And you think you recognize it, you recognize it, you recognize it. But the truth is, the more you listen to it, all of a sudden you become more desensitized to it. All the while, those little things are getting dropped into your heart. And so they are choking out some of the seeds and the things that you are doing and you may not even realize it oh what's a little movie oh what's i just like this tv show really really you're gonna let a tv show stand in the way of what god really wants you to do in the overall scheme of life is that tv show that important i mean get me wrong when i was with my mom uh after my dad passed i would have decorating shows 
on. And obviously I do that for a living. And so, you know, and they're pretty harmless, to be honest with you. There's a few of them I got to turn off from here and there. But anyway, I'll just watch, you know, some of those cute little decorating shows and whatever. And my mom's like, can we watch anything besides decorating? <laughs> it's not even like we were sitting down to watch it. It was just kind of on in the background. She's like, gosh, you watch a lot of decorating. <laughs> kind of over the same colors of whatever. And I'm just done with decorate. Okay, mom, it's your house. We don't have to watch. I'm sorry. I realize I watch decorating that much, but anyway. Glad to have you back, Pastor Nance. Yeah, it's good to be back. I can watch decorating at home anytime I feel like it. Okay, so the world wants to stop God from being sown in your life more now than ever at all costs. They're not, they're not even hiding it anymore. There's just flagrant witchcraft and stuff. You know, it used to be slipped into kids' things way more subtly. Now it's just flat out in the open, and parents are just signing up their kids for it and letting them watch it and all that kind of stuff. Man, guard your heart. Guard your ears. Guard your eyes. Absolutely. Out of it flow the issues of your life. Out of your heart flow the issues of your life. Access to God and his word are being squeezed out of all public life. Um, so, buy some time. Going back to it, buy some time, yeah. invest some time, plant some time in God and his word. You know, taking that, it used to be, we used to say an hour, right? Back 20, 30 years ago, everybody was on the hour thing. Take your first hour of the day. And we just backed off on that in, over, the, over the years because it seems so... for Religious. It's, well, whatever, but it was the well, best thing that like ever happened to a lot of us was to spend the first hour of our day with God. But the, you wanted to. Some people, I think, felt they had to do this rigid okay. whatever or they right. were going to go to hell. Well, okay. that's, not, that's not true either. You know, it's a, it's a give God... You know, there's a lot of ways to do it, but the Bible does say to put God first in your life and how you choose to do that or to how you choose to make him number one, that's, that's for you and God to decide. I guarantee you the more time you spend, you won't regret. But if you're just spending time so you can check something off a checklist and get your Christian gold star slapped on your back for the day, like that's not, that's not anything. That doesn't benefit you. That doesn't, that doesn't help anything, right? But if you are sincerely seeking God with your whole heart, give him your best. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. It's, it's, that's God's word, and we stand on that, and uh, putting God first place, like you just said. And uh, these are great, great things to, if you haven't, you know, let's get back to it. Let's just get back to challenging ourselves to put God first in our lives. All right. Uh, again, buy some time, invest some time, plant some time in God's Word. Uh, you reap what you sow, and you harvest what you plant. And it's a, it's a spiritual law. And think about spiritual laws. Uh, we've been, over the last few weeks on Sundays, we've talked somewhat about eternity. The Bible won't change. It's awesome that the Bible going to be is eternal right now. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the things that you do here in the Word of God will benefit you there for eternity. And how do I explain that? I can't, but I believe it with all my heart because Jesus said so. The Word of God says so. It says that it's forever. The Word of God is the same. It's not going to change. Maybe Jesus will sit us down in dum-dum school and explain some things that we got wrong, but nevertheless, we'll get it right. We'll have that understanding from his, the full understanding of what that Word entails, and we'll live for, eternal, retur live for eternity with the Word of God still a part of our life. Amen. All right, so closing this up today, we go back to Psalm 128, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're not afraid of God. We love God, but we, we are uh, walking in the fear of the Lord in the sense that I make choices that I want God to be pleased with, and it frightens me 
when I know that God isn't pleased with the choices that I'm making. And so, uh, blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walks in His ways, for you will eat the labor of your hands. Praise God when you prosper and you live in a, you work in a job that, hey, things are going well for me. And we want things to go well for everybody that, that spends time in the Word, seeks first the kingdom of God, and is a doer of the Word. We want things to go well for you, yeah. walking in His ways. For you shall eat the labor of your hands and be happy. Happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. What will be well? Hey, all things can go well for a Christian that puts God first place and walks in the fear of the Lord. Well, happy and blessed are valuable commodities, commodities in this day and age. Reaping, harvesting, and prospering are blessings that God intended for His end day church. I still believe it. A lot of people are moving away from the idea of God blessing people. Don't ever give up. Why? Because it is written that the truth is God keeps his word. Amen and amen.